Okay, so let's talk a little bit about standard versus elastic. So these are the first two that I want to take a look at. If you press control and you hover over elastic, it gives you some information that says it works basically the same. But what it's designed to do is hold the high res geometry in a little bit better shape. Who uses elastic? Well, Flakes is its own. Is there another one out here that does that? I'm not seeing soft clay. That's its own brush type. No. There we go. I was doing it wrong. So soft clay uses elastic. Move elastic, that's actually the move brush. And it uses something called elasticity. So soft clay, snake hook is its own, soft concrete. Let's take a look at these guys real quick. Uh, first, let's go into, say, standard brush. We know this brush is just the original add form. Uh, let's do this on a simple sphere so that you can reproduce the results. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to divide it. Okay, so standard brush. Sorry, I need to reset things. I'm going to reset all brushes. Okay. That's pretty straightforward. Nothing crazy. Let's come into the elastic brush. Okay, it doesn't look terribly different, but it did put form down differently. And you can see a little bit of this wobbliness. It's a little hard for me to explain this. I remember when this was developed. Um, it, it was kind of hard to, hard to learn them. But there's a couple of stages to this algorithm as I understand it. One, it does kind of run along the surface. But then it has another algorithm that kind of comes back over the top of that and resettles the form so that if you had pores and high-level details uh, on there, you'd be keeping that. And uh, let's put that one to the test, see if there's a model here or a project. Okay, I'm going to turn his texture off. And he has a wax modifier. I'm going to turn that off. So he's got some detail sculpted in there. And this is a little tough to see. In fact, let's just set this to white RGB fill object. You're going to learn more about what I did when we get to texturing. But what I want you to notice is the line. Notice the high-res detailing. And then let's take a little brush. Let's use the standard brush. And then let's use elastic. Okay. There we go. It's a little better. Now, it's a little hard to see. And it's very hard to see, in fact. Uh, so let's zoom in. But my understanding of the difference, as it was explained to me, was that the elastic brush was going to do a little bit more work to retain the form, whereas the standard brush could start to obliterate and soften form. So I'm going to turn the screen drawing off, but just look at those two different areas. 
depending on the um, the screen uh, um, how that's transmitting to you or how that's recording you may or may not be able to see the difference it's that finite but that was the general idea if you had detailing they just you know you, they didn't want you to lose it you you retained more of it as much as possible uh, you can really see you know some of that texturing is kept here whereas here it blows it out it's that small of a difference that makes it the elastic brush but it's cool because there's this whole separate region to it this whole separate thing that you can be kind of doing let's go into elastic I want to test something real quick yeah if you take the standard brush and you really push down you obliterate everything if you really push down with the elastic brush you still see everything I guess that's probably the best way to show it if you're really pushing down that's when the algorithm really shows its its true nature 